it came. The circuit boards. I was trying to clean up. Oh, you, it's probably too dark. You can't really say anything now, but I'll show you later when I start assembling. It's actually cleaned up. Let me bring you in. So I have got almost all of the parts. I say almost all because I realized I forgot the speakers and I'm sure as I start assembling them, I'll realize I forgot to order a couple other things off of the bomb. But the main thing is, let's look at the circuit boards. The folks on Discord have been putting up with me like posting tracking pictures. I will say, actually, before I open it up, let me talk a bit about why I chose JLC PCB. I don't, I've never taken a sponsorship for the video. I, I mean, the channel's too small. The sponsorship offers that I've gotten have been pretty minor and not really worth it. But I got two that I was really tempted to take up. One of them was Next PCB, and then later, and this is kind of like a little, you've got a nerd channel, you've made it, PCB Way reached out. Both of them offered to do some sort of a sponsorship. So when I was going through and creating all the Gerber files, I was uploading them to Next PCB and to um, PCBY, and I had a lot of people on the KiCad channel recommending JLC PCB. So I was going through the process of all three and decided which one I was going to choose. The thought was, if I ended up going with PCBY or Next PCB, I, I wanted to go through the process myself and see whether, as a regular user, what the experience was like. And it turned out that neither PCBWay or Next PCB were who I wanted to go with. Let me tell you why. So when you look at a circuit board, it's made up of fiberglass with layers of copper. And I was trying to figure out, because this is going to be a marine environment, can I just get away with the generic fiberglass or should I look at one of the special offerings? And I saw that it was S1000H. It was recommended for a marine environment because it's relatively thermal stable. Um, which is good because it's going to be in the helm box, which is going to have the sun on it if the bimini is ever down. So the inside of the box can get fairly hot and going into the cold weather, it can get really cold. So it's going to experience some good temperature swings. But more, the S1000H, it was the one I decided I wanted to go with because it doesn't absorb much in the way of moisture. And these are going to be sitting in a high, in, a high humidity, high salinity environment. The other thing I wanted to be able to do was to specify ENIG, E-N-I-G, it's a type of gold plating that goes on all of the exposed copper. So the same way that with everything else I've been doing with the boat, you tin the copper and the tinning acts as a way to protect the underlying copper from being exposed to the atmosphere and corroding. The gold does the same thing. The main thing with the gold, and I understand oh, gold is more expensive than tin, obviously. But one of the reasons to use gold on circuit boards instead of tin is it has a better contact when two pieces come together. So if you ever look at the edge connector on a board that you bought for your, like if you built your own computer, you have the edge connectors of the PCI card or the, I was going to say AGP, but then I just realized that's an old person thing. Anyways, so it does both protection from corrosion and improves the, it, does it reduce the resistance or is it just that it's soft so it makes more surface? I don't know exactly why, but I know gold is recommended when you're trying to build something relatively uh, decent quality. So I wanted Enig and I wanted S1000H. And on next PCB, I couldn't figure out how to choose S1000H. So I sent them a chat and I told them what I wanted to do. And I had a really difficult time communicating with them. And it ended up getting to the point where I, I uploaded the four um, Gerber files and I was talking to somebody and they said, well, what's your order? I hadn't ordered about like the number associated with the uploads. And they said they would get back to me with the price if I use the S1000H and they never responded. So their website wasn't particularly great and the support wasn't particularly great. And I'm sure that if I had been going through them wanting to be a sponsor, I would have been given much better service, but I don't, I'm not going to recommend a company that I don't, I, I want to know they're going to treat people who watch the channel good. Well, poor English there. Anyways, going to PCBWay. Everything I can tell about PCBWay is they are the higher quality option. Their website was fantastic after I uploaded the Gerber files. I had mistakes in the Gerber files. JL, um, JLC PCB and Next PCB, at least in the stage where I uploaded the Gerber files, they did not catch a problem. An example is that I forgot to include the drill files. Whereas PCB Way's automatic inspection of the um, of the files flagged that I was missing some of that stuff, and from what I've been able to see online, if you're looking for quality above anything else, PCB Way does seem does seem to be the upper. There, I won't say they're the best because there's so many companies out there, and I know so little about this. I'm not in any position to give strong recommendations one way or the other. But the 
thoroughness of the PCBWay website seemed to be better than NextPCB or JLCPCB. And talking to people who've used them, the quality seems to be a bit better. So one of the things I'll be checking for is how fine is the silk screening? So apparently that's one thing PCBWay does better. However, with the configuration that I went through, it was almost, it was just shy of double the cost. The end reason why I ended up going with JLP, JLC PCB is that the reputation was relatively good. For anyone in Canada, if you've ever gone to um, Canada Computers, they kind of made their name as, if you know what you're looking for, they're great, they have great prices, but don't ask for help. JLC PCB seemed to be kind of the same way. PCB way seems to be much better about holding your hands, much better about um, issue resolution and whatnot. Okay, so with those three said, I went with JLC PCB, let's finally open this. If I don't seem terribly excited, um, I assure you that inside I'm going, this is just, I, I don't want to cut myself, so I'm trying to be calm, or as one of my friends says, be clam. You know what's funny? I talked about sponsorship. After I ordered this, um, and I uploaded the last video, a different division of JLC PCB, not that JLC, whatever other division, they do, they had linear actuators and synchronous gear shivs. And they were like, oh, we'd like to do something with you. Now they're only offering a $150 thing, so I'm not gonna take them up on it because I know my channel's small, so it's probably fair to offer only $150 credit for a channel my size, but that's not enough for me to sell out my soul. So I may go with them if this is a good experience, but I'll pay out of pocket for it. I don't wanna have any, I don't wanna be beholden to any uh, content to another company, unless they're offering me enough money to actually make a difference to the project, in which case, hey, I'm human, I'll sell myself out. I, uh, I broke this razor blade and I was gonna throw it out, but then I realized the broken part is really sharp. So it's like I, my, my blade was refreshed. And if you're wondering how I broke it, I was trying to use it like a flat screwdriver on a really, really stubborn screw and it just snapped. Why didn't I go get my screwdriver? Because it was all the way in the truck and that was like 10 meters away. That was unreasonable distance to walk. Oh, it has a smell to it. Oh, wow, does it have a smell to it? I don't know if that's normal. Like, is this what PCBs smell like when you first get them made? Um, what the hell kind of jigsaw puzzle is... Oh, there we go. Ah, I can see them. Sure, if I'm looking this way, it's because I've got the Discord chat going with the patrons as well. <laughs> okay, let me put these down here. Let's move you in a bit. This is packing. This is definitely packing. Okay, well, the cat's gonna... <laughs> okay. Be clam. Oh, wow. Oh, okay, so I'm gonna put a link in the video. Uh, another YouTuber, I'm assuming, does much more circuit boards than I do, did a whole video showing the entire process of how these were made at the JLC PCB um, factory. It was really cool. It showed the whole process. It was, wow, this is strong plastic. And yes, this is actually grounded now. These are the battery displays. <laughs> that is very firm plastic. There we go, there we go. Okay, so far, the silk screen. Okay, I don't know if you can see. Is it gonna zoom in? That, so far, looks entirely readable. And I didn't get the, I did, the, one of the options was to choose the high quality silk screen. I did not choose that. <laughs> okay, I think I see my first defect and it's minor, but still, let me see if I can find another one and see if it's the same. No, it's the same on both of them, okay. I don't know if you guys can see that, but right there. Oh, because I had a via drilled there. That's why. Never mind. Uh, what I was thinking of is, I don't know if you can see right there. I'll put a, a thing on screen showing, but I had a via so that the 5 volt would punch through to the other side. And uh, why did I do that? Because there's already a whole bunch of holes. This is where I have to admit my ignorance. I don't have any frame of reference to say how these are compared to other companies. I, I was almost slightly tempted to order the same boards from PCBWay and see if I could see what the difference is. I, I'm holding my own PCBs, holy fuck. Okay, put them down. Um, but I don't know if I would even know, I don't know if I know enough 
to be able to look at them and say, oh, this one's better because of X, Y, Z, like Big Clive, he would be able to do that. Okay, let's open up the others. So the first board I am actually going to, oh, we got a little uh, desiccant thing in there. This is gonna be the first board I buy, the, or build, the relay boards. And the reason for that is I have a couple of extra of the um, C0 MCUs. So if I screw up my first couple attempts to solder, well, I have a couple of attempts to solder. And this is a relatively simple board with a lot of big parts. This is actually, I never measured it, but this is a fair bit bigger than I originally expected it to be. Like I knew what the sizes were. I just, <laughs> I'm sorry. I just, I started giggling because I designed these. Holy fuck. Well, okay, I designed them very much with help of folks on Discord and other friends. Like even my little, the relays, you can see the sort of symbols in there. I, uh, I did that on my, on my footprint and that's some very fine pitch lines and I'm not seeing any breaks in them or any smudging. Like it's, it's very clear. I am legit impressed. I'm trying to show it so you don't get the reflection of the lights. The other benefit to starting with this board, none of the parts are on the back. Oh, this is the only board where all the parts are on the top. Oh, I gotta try something. I gotta try something. Where's an LED? Give me an LED. This is one thing I'm still worried about is, did I get the spacing right? Look at that. It just dropped in. The spacing is right. <laughs> oh, lordy, lordy, lordy. Um, wow. Again, I, I, if I say I made it, I have to keep emphasizing the fact that I made it with lots of help, but I made these. Oh, this is so surreal. Okay, let's open up the Compass Rose. This was what started it all because I was trying to wire up all of these LEDs and I realized I couldn't do it. One of the reasons too why I wanted to get these made now is because I have to design the Helm box and I could have made like cardboard cutouts that were the right size, but I didn't know what the size was until I laid out the boards. And well, by that point, I might as well just order the boards. So now I'm going to be able to, even if these aren't populated yet, put them, I'll be able to sort of lay them out and figure out what do I want the box to look like? And then where are these going to sit? Wow, these are a lot bigger than I realized. So the reason they're this size is because I decided the radius of the LEDs based on that being there and then the switches coming through here. And that was just where I could get the LEDs and that set the diameter. <laughs> Holy fuck. This is wild. All right. Same thing. These look... Sorry, it's a bit of a weird angle, but I'm trying to keep the lights off of it. Oh, I am so scared to solder those C0s on. See? Also flux. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've got this flux. That's Gert, who uh, came down to help a little while ago. So I've got lots of flux. I've got the hot air station. I'll, I'll show all of that when I start building. Okay, last set of boards. God, this is so... Yeah! And Gert. You were saying about how much wasted space are on the boards. The one benefit to the wasted, wasted space is that I had some space with, um, without any through holes that I could put silk screens to show what all the pinouts were. There we go. Yeah. But uh, the price is uh, on the, uh, the square of the board. Yeah. Yeah, my glasses are up here like an old person. I can't see shit anymore. What Gert was just saying is the price you pay for the circuit boards is on the square centimeter. And I have a lot of dead space. And I was talking about how having some dead space was convenient because it gave me a chance to put the silk screen showing the pinouts for all of the D sub headers and the JTAG headers and whatnot. But that did increase the cost of the boards. So if I was mass producing and making you know, hundreds or thousands of these, that difference in price would have added up really quickly. And it would have been absolutely worth doing another revision of the board to get it shrunk down and get everything as tight as possible. But I would also not be using so many through hole components. I would have been using surface mount stuff. So the resistors and capacitors and whatnot that are surface mount are way smaller than the through hole components. So 
These are decidedly unoptimized boards. But considering I am only making a few of them, eh, not a big deal. If you can see how the gold plating goes all the way through, and that's true for all of the through holes. My friend Andrew, who has been helping me with a lot of this, he had a really good point. He was arguing that through hole components are actually easier when you're prototyping and reworking boards because they're so small that you can heat up generally both sides and pop it off very easily. With through hole components, there's a lot more thermal mass, especially with the vias. So the amount of heat you need to get into the leg to, um, to unsolder a part is a lot higher just because there's so much more surface area, so much more copper to wick away that heat. You have to really heat the boards up. If you were trying to build a system that's purely for efficiency, you probably want to use through hole as much as possible. But I'm not doing this for efficiency. I'm doing this for cosmetics, for the 80s goodness. That is that. And I don't have cardboard. This is the first time in like three years I actually have a proper surface. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to cleaning up. Probably not today, probably tomorrow. Start uh, planning to assemble the board. But I have a problem. I wanted to free up space so I have more space for tools. So I mounted my rack equipment down here and I don't know if you can hear it, but that switch has a fan in it, which is really annoying. So I'm gonna have to swap out that switch, which doesn't really mean anything to you. That's just explaining why I'm probably not gonna get to this tonight. And I believe me, I want to start soldering right away, but no, I'm gonna be clam and I'm going to finish cleaning up and getting everything set up. And then I'll sit down on the other side of a good sleep and we'll get to building. I think I'm gonna make this an uncharacteristically short video because by the time I sit down and start doing the actual um, circuit board building, that's probably going to become its own long video and I don't wanna tack this onto it and make that video even longer. So instead of being two to three weeks between videos, here's a little filler episode. It's not really filler because I was covering stuff and I'm very excited, but you get what I'm saying. See, I'm worried. If I sit here and don't put out the next video until I have the first board working, that could be a very long time from now. So I don't know what's going to be in the next video. Maybe just a little bit. Maybe just Maddie learns. I never know what I'm going to do. So if you like this kind of random nonsense, um, do the YouTube thingamajigs and until then, bye. It moves freer than it looks. It's just because it's in my, uh, I'm doing it with one hand. But yeah, there you go. Have the two rods going out to a pin on the quadrant.